So we continue with the morning session. Uh, so this is the last talk. Uh, we're pleased to have Satoshi Yoshida from the University of Tokyo. And he will be telling us about how to reverse uh, qubit unit trees. So please take it away. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Satoshi Yoshida from the University of Tokyo. And today I will talk about uh, our recent work about reversing unknown quantum operations. And uh, this is a joint work with Akihito Soeda in NII and uh, Mio Morao at the University of Tokyo. OK. So this is the outline of this talk. Uh, first, I will talk about the general perspective on the high yield quantum operation, which is the main topic of this talk. And then I will talk about our uh, main results about the reversing quantum operations. And finally, I will talk about the future work related to this work. But due to the time limitation, I will focus on the first result of this work. OK, let's begin with the general perspective. Uh, in the classical information processing, uh, information processing is usually done by applying a function on the bit sequences. However, uh, we can also consider another perspective, uh, which is a transformation of a function, and uh, which is called a higher order function. And uh, this kind of higher order function is often used in a functional programming. And uh, a basic example of such a higher order function is an iteration, uh, which takes a uh, uh, function as an input and iterates uh, its function. Okay. And uh, the quantum, quantum counterparts of this concept are called quantum operation and the higher order quantum operation. Quantum operation are just the transformation of quantum states. And uh, uh, usual quantum information processing is understood in this paradigm. However, we can consider the quantum counterparts of the higher order function, which is called higher order quantum operation. And it is mathematically defined as a transformation of a quantum operation. OK. And also, uh, in quantum information processing, the universal transformation are often considered, which is the following type of task. Given some unknown quantum state and uh, applying some quantum operation, uh, the task is to obtain the, uh, another quantum state, which is given by a function of the input state. And the important point is that this is not a point-to-point -point transformation which transforms, transforms some fixed quantum state zero to uh, another quantum state psi. And a uh, uh, famous example of such a universal transformation is a state cloning, which duplicates the unknown quantum state. OK. And uh, we consider the higher order version of such a uh, task, which we call universal transformation of quantum operations, which is a following type of task given a non quantum operation instead of the quantum state. And we utilize a higher order quantum operation to transform it to another uh, quantum operation, which is given up as a function of the input operation. And um, uh, in particular, we consider the universal transformation of an integer operation, which is given by, like uh, the input operation are given by a non quantum op unknown integer operation. And um, we transform it to another integer operation. And uh, we consider uh, various examples, like uh, the function can be like uh, u tensor m or u star, u inverse, u transpose, or control u. OK. But uh, OK, we define the uh, higher order quantum operation in a mathematical way. But uh, in a physical way, how can we implement such a transformation? The answer is to utilize a quantum circuit with open slot, which is called a quantum com. And uh, quantum com is uh, this uh, kind of uh, quantum circuit. And uh, uh, here, the uh, purple boxes are quantum operations, and uh, each wire represents a quantum uh, systems. And the important point is that we have an open slot in between the circuit. And we can insert some input operation in this, uh, sorry, in this input operation. And uh, we regard the obtained uh, quantum circuit as an output operation. So in this, in this sense, uh, it, it, it presents a transformation from input operation to output operation in a uh, circuit, in a circuit representation way. And we can also consider the multiple slot uh, version of the quantum com. And uh, in this case, we can insert the multiple input operations to obtain the output operation. Okay, so this is a a uh, quick introduction of the uh, higher order quantum operation. And uh, then I move to the uh, first result about uh, reversing qubit integer operation. OK. So uh, in this work, we consider the task called integer inversion, which is the following type of task. Uh, given unknown integer operation, 
A task is to uh, implement the inverse operation of the uh, input operation. And uh, this can be considered as a simulation of the time inversion because uh, if the neutral operations are given as a Hamiltonian dynamics like this, its inverse operation corresponds to the opposite time direction. So this is kind of time inversion. Okay. And, uh, by con and uh, when considering this type of task, the fundamental question is about what is the fundamental limitation of the initial inversion? And the previous work has answered this question in the two directions. One direction is to show some no goal results, which means uh, uh, like constructing some probabilistic or approximate protocol implementing the initial inversion. And another direction is to show a no goal result for some restricted cases, which means like a uh, in some uh, class of protocol, we can't implement the interim version. Okay, I will uh, review the previous works. First result about the goal result. The best known uh, protocol of the interim version uh, known in the previous work is called a successor draw uh, strategy, which is a foreign type of strategy. Uh, we utilize the input interoperation, and if the protocol succeeds, uh, it implements an inverse of the interoperation, and then, then we can end the protocol. But uh, still, if it, even if it fails, we obtain the identity operation uh, instead. And if we obtain this identity operation, we uh, run this uh, protocol again, and um, by uh, repeating this strategy, uh, we can increase the success probability exponentially close to, the, uh, uh, close to one. And then um, another previous work about uh, inter, uh, no goal results is like this. So when considering the parallel protocol, where we utilize the input operation in parallel, or we consider the store and retrieve protocol, where we store the information of the input operation to the quantum state and then retrieve the inverse operation. Uh, by considering this kind of restricted, restricted protocol, uh, we can show that the success probability of such a protocol can be upper bounded by one minus one over n. So we cannot uh, reach the one. And um, uh, we can also co calculate, the, uh, calculate by the numerical calculation by the, the, okay, so we can calculate the optimal success probability or the optimal approximate protocol for the initial inversion for some small cases. Like uh, if the dimension of interoperation operation and the number of calls of the interoperation operation are small, then we can calculate it numerically. And um, um, as far as we know, like, uh, it's still less than one, which means that um, uh, this uh, obtain optimal protocol is uh, probabilistic or approximate. Okay. So by, okay, we summarize the previous work. So in the previous work, it is known that there exists a probabilistic or approximate uh, protocol implementing the initial inversion. So in, in this table, uh, these three uh, boxes are already known. However, uh, the problem with, with a, like a there exists deterministic and exact protocol remains open problem. And uh, in this work, we answer this open problem positively for the case of uh, D equals two, which means that the dimension of the initial operation is qubit. Okay, so this is the main result of this work. There exists a deterministic and exact qubit initial inversion protocol, which utilizes uh, input initial operation four, time, uh, four times to implement the inverse operation. Okay, and then. This is a, a circuit implementing the interim version. In this circuit, uh, here the phi in is some arbitrary input state, which is to, uh, which th which is to be applied the inverse operation. And uh, the, uh, these green boxes, u in, are the input interoperations. operations. Okay. And uh, this uh, quantum state, psi minus and zero, and v1, and v2 are some fixed uh, states and fixed operations, which does not depend on the input operations. Okay, and uh, the out, uh, as, a, as a result, we obtain the output state, which is u in inverse phi in. So, which means that uh, by running this circuit, we can apply the inverse operation of u in to the arbitrary input state. So, uh, this means that this implements the uh, 
initial inversion. And uh, as a byproduct, we obtain auxiliary output state like this. Okay. And uh, here, the quantum state psi minus is defined as an anti-symmetric two-qubit state. And uh, this quantum state, uh, like uh, the output auxiliary state psi u in, is defined as a quantum state which is obtained by applying the u in to the psi minus. And uh, if you look at the, this quantum circuit very carefully, we can uh, find that uh, this quantum state also appears in the, in the input side. And uh, actually, this, um, um, like, um, this, uh, this fact is very important in the uh, following uh, uh, discussions. Okay. Okay. And uh, by looking at uh, this protocol, we can also find that this protocol has a repetition uh, structure. Like, uh, we repeat the uh, first, uh, first circuit twice, basically. Okay. Okay. And uh, the, this interoperation, V1 and V2, are uh, constructed by uh, uh, some quantum circuit called the Klebsch Golden Transforms, which is uh, related to some uh, representation theory of the initial group. Uh, like, uh, we cannot explain the detail about. Uh, we cannot explain, the, explain about the detail here, but uh, if, you, if you are interested in the detail, uh, please look at our archive paper. Okay. So then I move to the, uh, explain the characteristics of this protocol. Uh, first characteristic is about the catalyst. And uh, as I explained before, uh, the, this, quantum uh, sorry, this quantum state psi u in appears uh, in the output side and input side, which means that we can reuse this quantum state to the input side. Okay. And uh, by schematically, uh, we can write, we can write uh, our circuit like this. By using in input interoperation four times, we obtain the inverse operation u in, and uh, as a byproduct, we obtain the psi u in. And, uh, we can reuse the, this quantum state psi u in to the another one of the integer inversion, like this. So by adding uh, additional three extra calls of uh, input operation, we can implement the inverse operation again. And uh, we also obtain the psi u in again, which means that we can uh, repeat this strategy. Okay. So in this sense, we call that uh, this quantum state psi u in is a catalyst state because uh, this quantum state does not change before and after the protocol. Okay. And uh, I remarked that uh, without this catalyst state, this transformation is shown to be impossible. So uh, this shows the uh, 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 usefulness of this catalyst state in the injury inversion protocol. Okay. And uh, okay, I move to the another characteristic of this protocol, which is about the cleanness of the protocol. Okay, so uh, if you look at the out output auxiliary state, uh, this quantum state depends on the input neutral operation. So, which means that if uh, from the observer who does not know about the input neutral operation, this quantum state looks like a, a maximally mixed state. So, which means that if we want to initialize this quantum state to, 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 to be reused to another uh, protocol, uh, we we need some initialization cost, which is uh, given by our uh, entropy of the uh, maximal mixed state. However, uh, we can uh, invent a, a more clever way to uh, initialize this quantum state. Uh, by looking at the symmetry of the uh, quantum state, so uh, if we apply the u in again to this quantum state psi u in, we can show that uh, this is equivalent to the u in u tensor two psi minus, and uh, since this psi minus is an anti-symmetric quantum state, which is invariant under the u tensor 2. So uh, we obtain the uh, quantum state which does not depend on u in. So which means that by adding extra call over u in, uh, we can make the, this output auxiliary state independent on u in. Okay. And uh, in general, uh, we call such kind of a protocol as clean protocol, and we define the clean protocol as follows. We consider the transformation of interoperation like this, and if the 
um, auxiliary output state of the protocol does not depend on UIN. We call it as a clean protocol. And a clean protocol has two good points. One good point is about uh, we don't need any initialization cost of, of uh, this auxiliary output state. And uh, so we can easily reuse it to another protocol. And uh, another good point is about we can controlize this protocol if it's clean. And I will explain about uh, this, this fact in the next slide. OK, so we consider the uh, clean protocol implementing the function f, which takes an uh, integer operation to another integer operation. And if the, this protocol is clean, then by adding a control line like this, we can show that this protocol implements the uh, control f u in. So which means that this protocol implements the transformation from control u in to the control f u in. In this sense, uh, we, uh, we can implement the control wise protocol. OK. Finally, uh, I will talk about how did they find our inter inversion protocol. So uh, the basic strategy is to use some numerical, uh, numerical calculation uh, to search the uh, inter inversion protocol. But uh, since this numerical calculation is very computationally hard, we utilize the symmetry to reduce the computational cost. So uh, the, the, and, um, the basics of the numerical calculation is to utilize the uh, uh, semi-definite programming to optimize the approximation error of the integer inversion, and which is, ob uh, which is uh, already obtained in this previous work. And uh, basically, we can write uh, opt this optimization problem as a SDP. However, uh, since this SDP is computationally hard, uh, the, the parameters where the previous work has obtained are very limited to the, these three cases. So uh, to circumvent this problem, we consider the symmetry of the problem to reduce the computational cost. And uh, to see the symmetry of this protocol, uh, we consider the following operation on the general integer inversion protocol. So we consider the quantum circuit, uh, which implements the uh, integer inversion like this. So these are input operations, and uh, we obtain the output operation like this. And this proper box is uh, a quantum count. Okay. And first, we insert the uh, arbitrary integer operation V and W before and after the input integer operation like this. And um, since uh, this overall protocol implements the integer inversion, and the output operation should be the inverse of the uh, VU in W. So the output operation is given by like this. And then uh, we insert the V and W to the whole circuit to uh, cancel out the v, v inverse and W inverse. Okay. And um, this, this property uh, can be written as an integral of symmetry on the matrix which represents this quantum uh, com. Okay. And uh, by utilizing this symmetry, uh, we can extend the uh, numerical results obtained by the previous work to this one. And in particular, for the case of d equals 2 and n equals 4, we obtain the deterministic and exact integer inversion protocol. Okay. And uh, we add uh, additional remarks. Uh, one thing is about uh, from the numerical result, we can obtain the matrix representation of the quantum com. And uh, it is already known that uh, there is a procedure to obtain the uh, quantum circuit corresponding to the matrix representation of the quantum comb. So we can obtain the quantum circuit, basically. And uh, we also note that we utilize the reduction of the STP using the integer group symmetry in this work. But uh, the similar technique is also used in this paper. But uh, the technical details are different. OK, so I will move to the uh, next result. Uh, in this work, we consider the transformation of isometric operations. And uh, here, the isometric operation is an uh, uh, operation from pure state to pure state. But the difference to the integer operation is we can uh, change the dimension. And uh, mathematically, it includes the integer operation and the pure state as uh, special cases. So the basic example is like this. So uh, we consider the uh, deeply, um, copy of the a quantum state in the computational basis like this. And uh, the corresponding uh, inverse operation is given like this. Okay. And in this work, we consider the uh, 
task called isometry inversion, which is a task to reverse the unknown isometry operation. And uh, for this case, we uh, obtained the uh, similar result for the unitary inversion case. And the uh, basic key idea is to transform the unitary inversion circuit to the isometry inversion circuit by inserting some quantum com. Okay, this is like this. So I will uh, go to the uh, feature works. Uh, first work is, first uh, feature direction is about uh, extension of a deterministic exact unitary inversion for the uh, higher dimensional cases. So in our work, we obtained the qubit, uh, we obtained the result for the qubit case, but um, the extension for the higher dimensional case remains open. And uh, it is an uh, interesting question to uh, think about, is it possible for arbitrary dimension? And if so, what is the minimal number of the calls of the input initial operation? But uh, we conjecture that uh, for the general dimensional case, uh, at, least, at least we need uh, n equals d squared. So if you consider the d equals three case, uh, it means that it, it requires at least nine calls. And um, uh, our uh, CP uh, is restricted to the n equal five. So uh, to, uh, to investigate such kind of uh, regions, we need a further simplification of the SDP or a systematic understanding of, uh, of our interim version circuit to uh, construct um, uh, the, the interim version for the arbitrary D. And another direction is about the catalyst. Uh, we have shown that uh, the catalyst is, uh, is useful in our qubit interim version case, but uh, it is interesting to uh, investigate the usefulness of the catalyst state for the another cases of the higher order quantum operations. And um, uh, it is also interesting to investigate the relationship to the asymptotic setting because uh, catalyst, catalytic transformation and asymptotic transformation are, are known to be related in some cases. Okay, so this is a summary of this talk and I will finish the talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Satoshi, for a very nice talk. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you for the talk. That was a very fun problem. Um, I've been wondering for a while, is there a way of doing something like this, but for square roots of unitaries? Square root. Yes, so thank you for a nice uh, question. So uh, as far as we know, uh, as I know, uh, such kind of transformation is not known. And uh, the uh, most uh, difficult part of this kind of transformation, uh, this kind of transformation is uh, like, uh, the transformation is not uh, linear. So basically, uh, if you want to write uh, the, uh, S okay, so if you want to utilize our SDP uh, formalism, uh, then uh, this kind of nonlinearness, uh, due to this nonlinearness, we cannot write the uh, optimization problem as SDP. So, um, so yeah, it, it is very technically hard, but uh, it, I think it is a very interesting question. I see. Yeah. yeah, it'd be lovely if there were a solution to that. Uh, I guess I have another question, and that's pretty much on this point. Uh, say I promise you that the unitary belongs to some restricted family, like I promise you it's a Clifford gate, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there are any other techniques that you could do, maybe generalized to a larger number of qubits? Or? Yes, it is also an interesting question. And um, um, for instance, uh, for the case of uh, a preferred interoperation, uh, we can basically utilize, uh, okay, so it is known that uh, a transposition of the interoperation can be done by gate teleportation. And uh, I think uh, for the Clifford operation case, uh, gate teleportation can be done deterministically, right? And I think uh, in this case, so uh, uh, transposition can be easily possible for arbitrary dimensional case. But uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it can be uh, generalized for the interim inversion case, and I think, but uh, I think there should be some e easy way. But uh, uh, I, I think it, it, it is still like uh, uh, unknown. I see. I see. Well, thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. I was wondering about uh, the precise protocol, because you said it has two parts which are the same, and mm -hmm. then you just apply the, that thing twice, no? Mm -hmm. And this reminds me a bit of the power matrix polynomials which are known to exist in 
like very specific dimensions, like for example, dimension two, but not in dimension three. So, well, my question is, what does this, the state look in the middle before you apply it for a, for mm -hmm. a second time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, th th thank you very much. So basically, so uh, this quantum, uh, okay, the whole uh, quantum system is a, a seven qubit system, uh, but uh, if you look at the, uh, the the quantum state in the middle, uh, it is a uh, it is a kind of a three qubit tensor four bit four qubit quantum state, and the four qubit part is uh, just a zero state, and uh, so uh, yeah, but uh, the 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 this three qubit state is uh, a complicated some entangled state and uh, I, I I I don't know what is a, a simple way to describe it but um, yeah like uh, it, it 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 is some three qubit state so we can we we, we can uh, consider this uh, protocol as a okay we are given three qubit state plus a, a zero state and then we transform it this three qubit state to another three qubit state with the additional uh, like answer and uh, and uh, we we repeat this transform again to obtain this quantum state. Uh, we, we can uh, in interpret this protocol like this. So you, you have no interpretation for the state in the middle? As far as I know, okay. no. And do you, do you have any hunch on what happens with higher dimensions? That do you think that such a protocol can exist uh, or not? Yes, so um, I think so. Uh, like um, basically, the, uh, all the components in this protocol is uh, described by a very symmetric way. Like for instance, uh, the input state uh, appears in here is anti-symmetric state and we can uh, generalize it to the arbitrary dimensional case like um, by considering DQD state and also the, um, the, the quantum operations inside the, this initial operation are clips code and transforms which can also be general, generalized to the arbitrary dimensional case but uh, we also have some uh, additional uh, parts like uh, described by this swap gate and um, uh, I don't know how to uh, generalize these parts to the arbitrary dimensional case, so th that's why we don't, uh, uh, we are still doesn't have an uh, arbitrary dimensional interior inversion circuit. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Last question. Well, if there are no other questions, let's thank Satoshi and other speakers in the morning session. Thank you. Thank you. you.